welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's a special extra episode looking at the brand new Raspberry Pi 400, which has been supplied for you by my friends at the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So you cry, what is a Raspberry Pi 400? Well, imagine you took a Raspberry Pi 4 4 GB model and you took a Raspberry Pi keyboard and you somehow blended them together into a single piece of hardware. This would be a Raspberry Pi 400. It's a new all-in-one Raspberry Pi 4. And uh, down here, if I can find it, here we are in this box. We have, well, I can hear it moving around, waiting to get out. Inside here we have a Raspberry Pi 400. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have our Raspberry Pi 400, or more accurately, this is a Raspberry Pi 400 desktop kit, which contains a Pi 400 and all the required accessories. And this kit is in white packaging, as you can see, as it's a pre-release preview, but the final product will have a printed outer sleeve. And the price for this kit is $100, or you can purchase a standalone Raspberry Pi 400 for $70 and use your own accessories. So let's open this thing up. We just need to uh, pull off the sleeve like uh, that. And uh, oh, there we are down onto the floor. And very, very easy. There we are, straightforward unboxing. And in here we have, ah, the Raspberry Pi 400. And it really does look just like a Raspberry Pi keyboard, doesn't it? Although it is uh, considerably heavier. And if we uh, flick it over, oh, it says Raspberry Pi 400 on the back there. We know we've got the right thing. And it's got some, uh, Look, look like cooling vents there, there's some metal inside clearly, we'll uh, investigate this in more detail in a second, but for now let's just uh, put the Raspberry Pi 400 aside and see what's in the rest of the kit. More stuff down there on the floor, oh yes we've got a Raspberry Pi uh, mouse, let's just get that out. Oh we can't get in, we need to get in a stand with a knife, let's just into the Raspberry Pi mouse. And uh, there we are, a Raspberry Pi mouse. This will be a Raspberry Pi power supply. There we are, Raspberry Pi USB power supply. And uh, here we've got uh, an adapter for a micro SD card. If it's a micro SD card included with a uh, Raspberry Pi OS on it, I would imagine. And down here we've got, oh, this is heavy. Very, very heavy. What's in here? Oh, we've got an HDMI lead there. And uh, we've got uh, just the one HDMI lead. And we've got a, an official Raspberry Pi beginner's guide. The Raspberry Pi Foundation are very good at documentation. It's even included here in the Pi 400 kit. But let's return to the star of our show, the Pi 400 unit itself, which seems to be a very nicely made computer. Very nice keyboard. It's a soft touch, low travel keyboard, just like I like to use. Always test the end of a spacebar on keyboards. This passes the end of spacebar test and the shift key and enter key test, they all work very nicely. I could type on this very happily for hours. I really do like Raspberry Pi keyboards. And talking of keyboards brings us to the subject of keyboard layouts. This Pi 400 has got a UK keyboard layout, but I understand from the Raspberry Pi Foundation that a few other language layouts will be available a little after launch day, with the layouts initially to be available being UK English, US English, German, Spanish, French and Italian. Now, internally, this is a Raspberry Pi 4 4 GB model, which means that we've got a Broadcom BCM2711 system on a chip, although here the forearm Cortex A72 cores are clocked at an upgraded 1.8 GHz. Yes, the Pi 400 is actually faster than a normal Raspberry Pi 4. And of course, it's got 4 GB of RAM and it's got onboard Wi Fi and Bluetooth. But what you cry of connectivity? Well, if we look to the back of the unit, we find a bevy of familiar faces. And specifically, if we go into a closer shot, you can see we've got here a gigabit ethernet. Next to that, we've got one USB 2 port. I presume the other USB 2 port on the Pi 4 is used internally to connect to the keyboard. And then we've got along here two USB 3 ports. And I imagine this along here is a Kensington key lock for securing the device. And then if we move things along, if I just slide along like that, there we are, virtual uh, tracking shot. You can see here we've got a micro SD card. It's the one that comes with the unit. That is a, got a spring mechanism. I do like that 
There we are. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, HDMI connectors. These are micro HDMI supporting 4K at up to 60 frames a second. And then along from the HDMI, we've got a here USB-C to power the unit. And then finally, if we uh, slide along again, you can see we've got a, a GPIO connector. So you can do all the standard GPIO things on a Raspberry Pi 400. And it's very good to see that uh, pins one and pins 40 are clearly labeled. So we know which way round this GPIO connector is. And I imagine we'll soon see all kinds of dongles and backpacks that plug in here to the GPIO connector, the same way we get hats for Raspberry Pis in the bare bone form factor. And so there we are, the Raspberry Pi 400, a very exciting new Pi in this new all-in-one form factor. And the final thing I want to stress here is the build quality of this unit, which really is very good indeed. This is a very, very nicely made piece of hardware. And I stress this because this is a $70 desktop Linux PC. And to be able to get a desktop Linux PC brand new to this quality for $70 really is very impressive. And I guess it reflects the fact that the Raspberry Pi Foundation have been in the business of making low cost, high quality computers for a very long time. They really know what they're doing. Greetings. Here I am back again. And I've now got the Raspberry Pi 400 all connected up to the power supply, the mouse and a monitor, as you can see. So let's turn on the power. There we are, the Pi 400's now got some energy flowing through it, and it should now boot into Raspberry Pi OS, which comes pre-installed on the microSD card you get with the Raspberry Pi 400 if you buy it in the kit. And Raspberry Pi OS is a very nice, very stable Linux distro. This is not my first boot. As usual in my videos, I've gone in and set some scale factors so things look better on video. I've done all the system updates which are recommended. And we've got here a range of software there for installed. There is programming tools, full version of the LibreOffice Office Suite. And we've got the Chromium browser, VLC media player, even Minecraft is installed here, various accessories, things like that. Let's just uh, run up the Chromium browser, see if we can get to the internet, prove we're online. We should be, the Wi-Fi should be working. It says it is up there. Yes, we've got to the world's favorite website. And if you're wondering what you can do on a Raspberry Pi 400, well, it's everything you can do on a Raspberry Pi 4, four gigabyte model. And earlier this year, I spent a whole week using a Raspberry Pi 4, four gigabyte model as my only PC. And it worked very well indeed. And I didn't just use it for things like office work and accessing the web, but also editing the video in HD, including doing some video compositing. And I delivered a lecture in a lecture theater from a Raspberry Pi. So you can use a Raspberry Pi, I proved it, as a perfectly acceptable desktop PC. Not the most powerful desktop PC in the world, but a perfectly functional desktop PC. And you don't have to just use Raspberry Pi OS. There are lots of other very good operating systems available for the Raspberry Pi. And these include things like Manjaro and OpenSUSE. And the latest distro for the Raspberry Pi is Ubuntu 2010, the first officially supported desktop Ubuntu distribution for the Raspberry Pi. And it works, as you can see here, very well indeed. And I'll be looking in a lot more detail at Ubuntu 2010 on a Raspberry Pi in a video in a few weeks' time. Oh, and we shouldn't forget that the Raspberry Pi 400 has its GPIO connector, so you can use it to do all kinds of things where it controls things in the real world. For example, here, as you can see, it's controlling a couple of servos, bringing them to life. And if you want to know about controlling servos with a Raspberry Pi, you can look at my video, Raspberry Pi Servo Motor Control. Now, if you're like me, and don't worry if you are, there are medications available, but uh, if you're like me, you probably looked at the Raspberry Pi 400 and one of the first things you thought was cooling. Will the uh, SOC inside here get very hot? Is there some sort of cooling solution? And if we look at the back, we can see, as I noted earlier, there are these vents and there's clearly some sort of metal, if I can make it glint uh, inside there, maybe that's linked to a cooling solution, we don't know. And I've decided not to take apart this kindly supplied pre-release review Pi 400 just to find out what the cooling solution is, but 
Earlier this afternoon, I did run my standard Sysbench cooling test on this uh, Raspberry Pi 400, as you can see running through here. This is a test I've run many times before on lots of different cooling solutions for a Raspberry Pi 4. It runs for uh, just under 10 minutes, really stresses out the CPU and gives us uh, eight temperature readings during that period of time. And uh, the final results, as you can see, are very impressive. If we put them onto a table, you'll see that a Pi 400 runs significantly cooler than a Raspberry Pi 4 with no cooling at all. And it's giving us comparable performance here to a Pimeroni fan shim. It's outperforming a, a flirt case. It's not getting to the dizzy heights of an ice tower. You wouldn't expect it to. That's a very impressive active cooling solution. But we can be absolutely reassured that the Raspberry Pi 400 has got very good internal passive cooling. And of course, when looking at this table, we mustn't forget that the Raspberry Pi 400's cores are clocked at 1.8 GHz rather than 1.5 for the Raspberry Pi 4. So these results we're looking at are actually very impressive indeed. As you can probably tell, I really like the new Raspberry Pi 400. And thanks greatly to the Raspberry Pi Foundation for letting me have this before the launch so I can make a launch day video. And the reasons I really like this are basically twofold. Firstly, this is a very nice clutter-free Raspberry Pi. We know since the launch of the Raspberry Pi 4 that the Raspberry Pi Foundation have been putting forward the Raspberry Pi as a low-cost desktop PC. And for many people, that was possible, but they probably didn't want to have a small board, put it into a case and a keyboard and a mouse and all the wires. They don't have to anymore. You've got a low cost Linux PC in one place that you can just take this, plug it into a television, plug it into a monitor, get on with a bit of computing. That I think will be a really attractive proposition for many people. I've been hoping for many years that the Raspberry Pi Foundation would put a Raspberry Pi into a keyboard and they have, and I, and I really like the result. And that sort of links to the the broader reason that I really like the Raspberry Pi 400, because we've now got a Raspberry Pi in the same form factor, which launched early home computing, microcomputing, as we used to call it. I know many of you who watch this channel who are, say, older than other people who watch this channel, remember uh, computers like, I can find it down here, this one, the, the ZX81 or the Timex Sinclair 1000, I think it was called in the United States. And many of us got into computing quite a few years ago now with machines like this or the Sinclair Spectrum or early Commodore machines or Atari machines or even BBC Micro, something like that. We got into computing basically using a device which was a keyboard with a computer inside which you plugged into a television or a monitor and you learned how to program all the exciting computing stuff. And we've now got exactly the same thing going on here with the Raspberry Pi 400. And that really takes us back to the essence of why we have a Raspberry Pi. And people often say to me, why do we need single board computers? What's the purpose of the Raspberry Pi? And they are used for all kinds of things, including robotics controllers and media players and small servers and IoT and all that stuff. But fundamentally, the Raspberry Pi is an educational piece of hardware. It was created to get people into computing, into programming, learning about that stuff. And this will just make that a bit easier for some people to get into that. You can just take this device, plug it into a monitor or a television via like HDMI, and you've got all the connectivity on the back. You can learn about GPIO and controlling uh, physical devices with a computer, learn about Linux, learn about programming, all that sort of stuff in the early microcomputing form factor. I think that's a really nice innovation. Anyway, I'm getting far too excited about this new Raspberry Pi, so I think I'll call things a, a day at that. So uh, that is now it for this video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.